Welcome, my name is Kendi, and I'm a teacher here on Burbling from Southern California, but I'm currently living in Istanbul, Turkey right now. Thanks for joining this class. This will be a speaking class as usual, so again, you will not need your pen or paper. Put those down and get ready to speak. Don't be shy. Today we are talking about education, formal education versus informal education. Which do you think is more important? Um, and what are the advantages and maybe disadvantages or the pros and cons to each one? To join this class, press the green Join Class button up in the upper right corner. You'll be directed to a Google Hangout where we'll have our discussion. And the uh, verbling.com window will be in the background. So when that happens, uh, just go ahead and mute the video or close the window entirely because there's a delay and an echo that disrupts the class. When you enter in the Hangout, sometimes your microphone is automatically on mute. So go ahead and make sure those settings are fixed. Uh, they are also in the upper right-hand corner of the Google Hangout. Make sure your uh, audio sounds are working, that you can hear us and that we can hear you. Also, if you are participating and you are not in the class, you can do so by using the chat box and type in as you follow along with our class, even if you're not in the actual Hangout. So welcome back to some of those who I've seen before. Can you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves and tell us where you're from? Uh, hello, Kendi. I'm Hi. from Russia. How my, are you? What is your name? My name is Alexander. I'm from Russia. Alex Alexander, OK. Thanks. Uh, welcome back. And do you go by Alexander or Alex? Uh, just Alex. Alex. Alex? Okay, cool. Thanks for being here. Welcome. And Yuri? Uh, hello, I'm Yuri from Russia, too. Oh, wonderful. Thanks for being here. So we're talking about uh, education, formal education versus informal education. Uh, what do I mean? Formal education is usually used to describe education within a university or a school system, an actual institution of learning. So any public or private school or university, um, this is what I mean by formal education. Or formal training, if you um, are trained in the arts or trained in the sciences or trained in another vocation, this can also be formal education. Informal education, what do I mean? I guess this definition can be pretty broad. Informal education is related to life experiences, um, things you learn along the way, just participating in life, I guess. And so uh, we've touched on this topic in some previous classes, and I guess I wanted to delve a little deeper into the subject uh, with you guys. So, Nan, thank you for being here. Welcome back. Can you hear yeah. us? Okay. Hi, can you introduce yourself to the class and tell us where you're from? Can you tell us where you're from? Me? Yeah. Uh, I'm from Vietnam. Okay. Can you Thank hear me? You. Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Thanks for being here. Sergey. Hello. Can you hear us? Yes, I can Hi. hear you. Hi. I am from Belarus. Um, from my previous conversation, for many people around the world, it's uh, part of Russia, but it isn't exactly so. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. It's nice to have you. Hi, Tarsicio. Welcome back. Can you introduce yourself to the class? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for being here. It's nice to have you. Hi, Tarsicio. Uh, introduce yourself to the class. Just a second. Well, my name is Tarsicio. I'm from Brazil. I am 17 years old. And I'm not studying anymore. And that's it. <laughs> so, so what are you doing? I'm doing nothing, actually. 
You are practicing your English on verbally. I'm not that good in speaking. I'm better in writing. I oh, didn't improve my what? speaking. You know, I didn't well, have the opportunity. And now? Now I'm trying to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's what these speaking classes are about, just giving you an opportunity to speak. And you know, um, a lot of times, even native speakers, maybe especially native speakers, don't speak uh, correctly. You know, you'll hear some bad grammar or sentence structure in a lot of native speakers' speech. Um, and so, and that's, that's okay. The point is communication. And so getting practice speaking is about getting over uh, being shy and not being afraid to make mistakes because you will and probably make mistakes. That's my problem. <laughs> yeah, that's very common. Even I make mistakes when I speak English sometimes, so, or maybe a lot of times. But the point is communication, and the, the point of these speaking classes is to just gain confidence and just practice getting your words out there. And the more practice you do that, the more fluid your uh, speech will sound. So it's very good that you're in this class. And this is why I don't like when students are using pen and paper. The point is to just speak, right? Listen and get practice speaking. So. <laughs> Um, let's thank start, you. I guess. Yeah, no, thank you for being here. Um, so, education. I guess I want to know, what do you guys think is uh, more, let's just get right to it, what do you think is more important or more valuable? Uh, education that comes from formal institutions, formal education or informal education? Let's start it's with, uh, oh, go ahead, Tharsicio. I think that it depends on the situation. Okay. For example? For example. Oh my god. <laughs> Can I continue? Alex, oh my go god. ahead. I stuck in it. No, it's okay. <laughs> go ahead, Alex. What were you saying? Oh, for example, you live in uh, in some place where you uh, have not uh, have not uh, great education. For example, in village uh, or in a uh, uh, place uh, look like village. If you live in a big city, uh, you exactly can. Uh, study in great university or college, but uh, it's uh, not for all people, I think. Mm -hmm. You don't understand sure. anything, yeah? <laughs> no, of course I understand. I'm thinking about what you're saying. Also, I'm giving other students a chance. If you want to respond to someone, please just jump right in. Um, but yeah, I get what you're saying. What you're saying is it depends on your situation. If you grow up maybe in a more rural area uh, or a place where you don't have access to formal education, um, your informal education will become very important. Um, maybe how to grow crops from your land or do other things around. Um, that becomes more important. But if you live in a city, a big city, or a place where you have more access to formal institutions, then maybe that becomes more important. Yeah, that's right. Uh, can I ask you one quick question? Absolutely. Oh, where do you live? Uh, which town or country? Oh, um, I am from Southern California, but I am currently living in Istanbul. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, good. That's a really good point that you made. Thank you so much. Alex, Sergey, what do you think? Frankly mm, speaking, I think uh, it's, uh, it will be a better idea to practice uh, our English uh, deliberately and uh, choose uh, lessons uh, on such sites as uh, ver like verbaling to practice uh, 
informal way uh, our our language uh, to be more more fluent to be more um, wide, widely speaking on any i uh, any items i think uh, it will be uh, better to uh, have my uh, more informal uh, practice hmm. Yeah, actually, that's a really good point, Sergey. Thank you for bringing this up. This was one of my questions to you. Uh, Birdling is a site, a website dedicated to the learning of languages. Um, so it is, I mean, what do you guys consider? It's, it's a website, so it's very informal. Um, but at the same time, it's a specific place uh, where people come together to practice learning languages. Then again, and yes, we are. There are teachers in your virtual classrooms, um, but also there are a lot of just um, there are a lot more uh, students maybe that come together in kind of an informal setting. Um, but we're all here for the same reason, I guess. So, what do you consider Verling? Do you think it would be a formal place of learning or more an informal place of learning? Because it's a very interesting space. Hmm. Uh, for me, it's uh, more informal than mm, yes, to study English in any other places because uh, here you can find uh, uh, very different kind of person and uh, teachers, and uh, you can. Uh, choose any items you like and uh, practice mm. when you can do it and uh, not be strongly attached to Definite uh, point of uh, of speaking and to read or writing or some others. Yeah, yeah. You can practice anything you want here. You can definitely yes. choose your lessons. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. absolutely. Yeah. And how are you? How are you finding these lessons? Um, do you feel? Have you studied English in a classroom before? In a classroom setting? No, it was a very long, long time ago, and now I can uh, study English uh, almost uh, by myself. And uh, I find uh, this site is very useful and uh, mm, uh, <laughs> and that's all. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, God, actually, I have a question for you. Um, I've seen you in some of my classes from before. Uh, for example, when I first started Verbling, you were in my classes. So I know you have been using this site for a while now. Um, what do you think? Do you think uh, this, has been, this has improved your English? Do you feel like your English has improved by using this site? Are you asking me? I'm asking um, Nan. I've seen her. I don't know. Are you still there? I've seen her in a lot yeah. of my classes. From yes. Before. Okay. Ngambao. So, have you um have you studied <laughs> English in the classroom also? Yeah. Yes. And have do you um, think that this yeah, in Um, uh, in Vietnam, um, uh, um, Vietnamese um, uh, education system uh, is not good, especially uh, uh, about um, the way uh, to teach uh, English. Yeah, um, so um, I feel um, so boring when uh, I go to school. Uh, 
uh, and I have to um, uh, study English in my school. Uh, but now I feel um, uh, it's better uh, when I study um, on the plane. Mm. Okay. Who else yeah. has um, used verb? Thank you. Who else has used verbling for a little while now? Pardon? Yuri? Oh, I was asking uh, to the class. Mm -hmm. Yuri, are you new to verbling? Um. I'm studying English in uh, school too, and uh, uh, in Verblin too. Um, but Verblin for me, it's um, only my conversation practice. And uh, if I uh, take part in uh, grammar lessons, I, um, of course, it's helped me. But um, for me, it's it's conversation. It's um, helped me improve my uh, speaking skills more than my grammar skills. Um, I think we're in its perfect place. <laughs> <laughs> Have you taken a grammar class on Verbling before? Yes, of course. I uh, I'm here about um, more than one month, and uh, I have grammar. Uh, I had grammar classes, um, but um, uh, it is um, helped me. But um, I don't know. Uh, I give more information from speaking, from uh, conversation with teacher, uh, uh, more, more um, speaking practice uh, than grammar practice on grammar classes too. I listen, I try to understand, I try to uh, feel language and uh, grammar classes for me it is uh, something uh, very funny and uh, I try to understand language, I try to uh, um, I grow my uh, six um, uh, feelings uh, for language, or seven. Senses? You use your uh, senses? Yes, yes. I try to, 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 to... How many senses do you have? I don't know. Maybe nine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, I don't check it in the morning. Sorry. Maybe some of them not working today. But uh, maybe six, seven. Guys, help me, please. <laughs> okay. I believe it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Hi, mate. Welcome to the class. Can you hear us? Are you hi, mate, or are you Jamie? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, where are you from? Can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Nah, maybe not. Uh, but we can hear you. Um, okay, so what about um, our CCO? Hey. So for, um, um, you made a point. You made a point in the chat box. Uh, for example, if you're studying law, you need formal education and classes. But when you're studying something more interesting, according to you, like music, you can do a lot of things that make the class uh, funnier and happier, like parody jokes, games. So OK, so I guess what you're saying is it depends on what you're studying, uh, whether, you're, uh, whether you want to learn about maybe the sciences, or law versus something more related to the arts. And formal education can be more important in one area, and informal education is more important in the other areas. I think uni point? university can be funny too. It depends on uh, your professor. Um, I know professor which, uh, who, I think who, who, who? can uh, made very, um, funny lesson uh, with uh, math and analytics, really. It was very fun. But uh, uh, other professor can uh, broke, um, break, I think break, break uh, really fu uh, funny subject, uh, for example, music or arts. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, we can uh, sit down in auditory in, uh, in a classroom and uh, write down um, um, uh, what uh, what uh, professor read in from a uh, book uh, uh, with a uh, um, very um, 
mm, it's it very sadly uh, really it, it depends of, of your teacher is it very funny or is it not very funny it's not informal and formal uh, it's not difference between informal and formal education it is uh, it depends of uh, your teacher and uh, um, I think it's more important okay so yeah it depends on your teacher the teaching methods that they use it depends on the classroom setting I guess also my question to you is uh, we can meet many people in the world. Some people um, have access to formal education and some people don't. Um, but if you meet someone, for example, that has not been to uh, university, for example, but maybe they've lived a uh, life, maybe they have um, traveled a lot, or maybe they have uh, worked outside, or maybe they are an artist, um, or maybe they're an expert in some other field, would you consider this person educated even if they did not have a college degree? Do you think it is um, very important for a music or painters uh, to have college degree? <laughs> it's That's not. my question to you. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and um, I think um, um, if you can uh, do your job or your hobbies, if, if hobbies is your job, I think for music, uh, for music, for music, for music and arts, it's uh, very important that uh, your job is your hobby. If you can uh, do your job, your hobby, very professional without education, you're you're the best. It's perfect. Why not? But uh, for me, um, I. I have education. I have a bachelor degree. Uh, it it isn't classic education. It it it, it, it was very unusual for Russia. But um, I want to continue my education uh, in classic university now. Really, I I I I, I want to uh, to. Uh, to be more professional, uh, I'm not arts. I'm, I'm not a music musician, of course. For um, but but I think uh, for me it's important. I think for several mu uh, for several arts uh, it's important. Uh, you must know classic uh, paint uh, history, for example, or uh, history of uh, music arts. Uh, it's very important to maybe uh, it's better to have uh, education, but. Um, we can't compare. We can't uh, take uh, people without education and take people with education in compare. It's 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 different. Uh, it's always different. But if you you're a professional and you have perfect skills in your uh, and uh, without education you are the best. It's perfect. Why not? Okay. Good. Thank you, um, Antonio. You just joined our class. Can you hear us? Okay. I don't know. I I just arrived. I, I I didn't hear all the conversation. Oh, welcome. Okay. Uh, so we are talking about education. We are talking about yes. formal education versus informal education. Yes. Yes. I, uh, I know the you... education because I am professor in the university here in oh. Spain. Oh, wonderful. What's <laughs> your uh, What a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Thank you so this will be, I would love to get your opinion on this and hear your perspective as a professor. What is? Uh, what subject do you teach? I, I teach uh, projects, project management, project management for engineers, for engineers and, and economics. For software engineer. What? Uh, sorry, for so software engineer or for or no for for mechanical and electrical and civil engineer. I want to study electric. <laughs> what? <laughs> so. Oh my god! Cool. And where, do you think? Do you... Sorry. Please ask. Uh, do you think uh, you give uh, good education uh, and uh, do you think it is very important that uh, for students to have classic education or maybe uh, not? 
what is class what is classic education for classic, you uh, classic education for me it's education in university in uh, uh -huh. university with professor uh, with professor and uh, uh, professor give me some experience and some information about my subject formal education uh -huh. I think this is the better no <laughs> if you choose the best professor not in my case but in other case yes you could be the best teacher and if you have the teacher with a formation in a pedagogical situations is the best way to to receive the formal education or education without formal in the university you can receive formal and informal education too i think what are ways, what are ways that you can uh, experience or receive informal education on a university campus? Uh, but I, I don't know what is the informal education for for you or I, I don't understand this this term. I think informal education is a good example of informal education is verbally. It is conversation, it is uh, uh, communication. It's uh, maybe not um, uh, exact, uh, it's, it's not... Um, I think she means an alternative way of teaching. But uh, I think verbally is formal education. I, I received classes of English in, in my university and uh, the way of the classes are similar uh, to Werbley but instead of hangout with presential, physical presential in the classes but it's the same way of to, 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 to lead the classes I think I don't know <laughs> because you, you I, I think formal education is I don't know I don't know the, <laughs> the meaning of the of that expression okay what is informal education teacher please <laughs> <laughs> okay so when I was asking about formal and informal education um, typically I guess I would think of formal education as uh, being done in an institution like a university or high school or junior high school or primary school or a vocational school. Um, maybe you go to art classes, um, anything that is maybe like instructed and very directed and very structured. Um, it would be my idea of formal education. Um, informal education, I guess it's pretty broad uh, like a lot of other topics. Um, I consider informal education to be just life experience, you know, experiencing um, uh, anything that is like learning how to change a tire on your car because you are stuck on the road and you have to just figure it out yourself or going through life and um, learning from other people, being in relationships, uh, learning about humans this way also maybe just talking to local people. Maybe you're in a different city or a different country and you talk to other people and you learn about their culture this way by being friends with them or learning a language, uh, for example. Um, maybe I don't go, I'm, I'm, in, I'm living in Turkey right now. I'm from Southern California. I used to go to Turkish classes where I was sitting in a classroom trying to learn Turkish. Um, and now my schedule is pretty busy so I can't do that. But I can learn informally through just talking to the locals, going to a cafe and trying to figure out how to order things and just talking to my Turkish friends. So this is what I could this is what I'm talking about informal education. Also, I've met a lot of people, as I'm sure you have too, have not gone to university, they don't have a degree, but I wouldn't say they are uneducated. They're very educated. Um, and I also know a lot of people that have gone to university and they have a degree, but I don't know if I would consider them educated. So this is my question to you, though. Um, those are my ideas about formal and informal education. And actually, Antonio, as a professor, you work in a formal um, environment, a formal education uh, space. 
Um, but you also said you can receive informal education um, in college, which I agree with, and I want to know the examples. And last thing, uh, there's been this debate, what is Verbling? And it's true because you can receive formal grammar classes from Verbling, but also you can just join a speaking class, which is pretty informal. And again, it is very directed to the learning of English. Um, also, you can do it from your own home, so it's very informal in the way it happens. So I want to turn this over to you guys now. What do you guys, what do you think? What, do you think one is more important than the other? Okay. Do you know Coursera project? Uh, Coursera, it is project of uh, the best university, the professional from the best university from, uh, for example, MIT and uh, Harvard and Stanford. Uh, teach uh, students uh, on online uh, in internet and they uh, uh, students uh, make uh, home, uh, homework uh, house uh, home exercise uh, home exercise and uh, they uh, have uh, a score a score and um, uh, in, in, in conclusion they can uh, get um, uh, certificate um, that they have this education. It is it is a formal education uh, over internet, and I think it is formal education um, with classic scheme. But verbling it is uh, informal. Uh, we can uh, take lesson. Uh, I can go out now, uh, now uh, and uh, we don't have uh, any uh, homework. Uh, it is informal more than formal. I think. Okay. Antonio, you said you can receive I, I, informal education in a university I, setting. I agree, but in, in, I have an, another point, because informal education, I, I agree with you, informal education is, is to learn a language without, without classes, without... I, I want to go a conversation class, no. I want to, to go out and speak with the with the people to to go uh, shop to to buy something, and this is for me the informal education. I think the best way to to learn is formal education because the 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 teacher is prepared to 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 not to not to to teach you. Uh, is prepared to for your learning, for your self-learning. And th I think is the important way because you can you can you can be uh, more I don't I don't know how to say it, but you are better prepared you are better well prepared for the for the learning experience. And okay. the, in with the informal education you can uh, you can take years to learn only one thing and with a formal education you can learn it in two weeks I think okay and uh, uh, you're a professional and you're a professor and you um, uh, work in university uh, what you prefer uh, um, do you think uh, it's better for a student uh, to have your classes about project management and to have a real experience of some of jobs uh, and when they have a real experience uh, on some of uh, big companies they have informal education because uh, they uh, study on a real project I don't and agree. I, don't agree. <laughs> oh, I, used, uh, I use as a formal education this this education in big companies, real cases, and so on. But it's a part of the formal education because it is a structure. It is in a plan. No, is I think informal education is without plan, without plans. Is chaotic education. Uh, I try to. Um uh, explain you my experience because uh, I have classic um, I, I have formal education uh, twice a week I study English with my teachers uh, and uh, I, every evening I try to um, uh, I try to study on Verbling uh, and I have ex uh, experience in informal education too 
and uh, I try to mix uh, these two education and um, it, it's, it, it give me a good result really. I speak uh, maybe not very clever, maybe not uh, very uh, right I uh, have, but I speak better than one month ago. Um, maybe I think you, yes. yes, yes. I think you are, I, you are speaking about the difference of classic education and non-classic education. Maybe, maybe. But I know, sorry. But formal or informal is not the same than classical or modern education. Oh, sorry, I don't define? understand them, uh, everything. Sorry. So, Antonio, how would you define classical and uh, uh, modern education? How would you define those? That for example, uh, one example of the classic education is the the I, I don't know the, the, the word in English is the typical class when a teacher is uh, speaking alone about one hour a lecture mm -hmm. and people is writing or hearing or sleeping whatever they want and the classes is finished and a modern education wants to imply the students with the teacher and the teacher uh, for example uh, is sharing the class with a celebrity in the business uh, a very good uh, a sex, sex, sexful uh, a successful man in the business in this in the I don't know uh, I, I am I am having a, a blank time by it's, it's a different way of teaching the classical and the, and the modern because in the classical the important was the teacher in the modern the important is the student excuse me let me have a word <laughs> Yes, Sergey. Um, yes, excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I want to say that, um, in my opinion, when we speak about formal education, I quite agree with uh, you that uh, in formal education we can obtain, we will be able to obtain uh, the certificate certificate uh, or other documents about our education and here on Verblin we, we use uh, our knowledge, our skills for uh, other purpose. So we practice with funny and uh, study language I think even more better than uh, we can do it in formal classes. Um, of course, uh, don't uh, any time. And uh, I think it would be better idea to divide uh, this uh, this word and term as uh, where can we obtain the documents about our education or not. Yeah. And here we only pra we get practice uh, more and uh, increase our knowledge in, uh, in language or something of that kind. Well, so may say something about it. Uh, I think uh, that uh, you, every every person, you have to uh, you have to something uh, base information about subject uh, which he learn, and only after that uh, he can uh, practice in this uh, in this sphere. I think, but uh, without uh, base information, uh, base dates. Uh, you can't do something in this subject. 
you don't uh, you will uh, don't know how how you can uh, do something in this area Mm -hmm. Okay, so for example, uh, Verbling, let's take, I guess we're talking about learning languages, um, and also Verbling is a space to do this. So everyone comes together to practice their English, um, uh, for example, in this classroom. Uh, but uh, do you walk away learning more than just about English? This is a very interesting space where people from all around the world can come together and we have cultural exchanges and we learn about each other so do you walk away learning more than just English conversation or grammar from verbling classes? Yes, of course. <laughs> it's true. I quite agree with you. I couldn't agree more. It's a very good idea to to do such um, to, to give uh, to people such uh, different experiences? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. To, 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 to learn English and other cultures and to, to speak with people all around the world. And Oi. I guess this is what I, I also mean by informal education. Maybe we're here formally to practice our English, but uh, we are gaining informal education. We're learning about different cultures um, and everything that comes along with that. Foods and customs and uh, holidays and superstitions and things like this. So this is also what I mean, I guess, by informal education. Uh, what do you, as far as... Um, learning languages, which do you think is a better method, formally in a classroom or informally? It's a mix, the best, no? It's a mix of formal and informal. Yes, I agree with you. Yeah, that's right. Because okay, the formal um, education is very hard, no, for your, <laughs> for your mind health. is takes all the all the effort and is very is for me is um, I don't know the say I, I, I am forgotten all the words in English <laughs> but to cansado to is I don't know. <laughs> in Russian it's very, in Russian language, like uh, in other uh, cultures, I think there is such uh, phrase as uh, nothing uh, good. To, uh, there is no nothing good to, <laughs> better than uh, gold mi middle and. Uh, you, we, we can uh, have uh, we have to get like formal uh, as <laughs> informal education too I think uh, we must be uh, educated in formal ways uh, like uh, as in informal ways mm -hmm. I, I think another quote. difference <laughs> No, I think another difference between formal and informal is formal is very tired because it implies all your attention and the informal is not too tired because you can do more things at the same time like... That's not very tiring. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and this is very tired the, for me, the burbling, because because require all my attention and <laughs> all my mind in what I am saying and what I am hearing and what I am watching is very formal education. Well, what about, um, I mean, this is just a conversation class, so what about a conversation just with another person? Don't you have to uh, pay attention <laughs> and listen to what they're saying? Yes. But I think is this is a an advance 
an advanced class of conversation because the topics are no are easy to to speak and think in our mother language i say yeah and so, you are doing great actually this is this is, i prefer to have classes like this for some students a little more advanced because uh, where else are you going to practice talking about difficult concepts? This is when we learn new vocabulary and start using our minds to think in a different way, in a different language. So you're doing great. It's supposed to be a little difficult. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> uh, we have a few more minutes left. Does anyone, I just posted a quote in the chat box. Um, I can't see it. Maybe you guys can. Um, by Albert Einstein, education is uh, what remains after one has forgotten everything he learned in school. Does this make sense to anyone? Does anyone agree? Disagree? I agree, I agree. <laughs> I do too. I quite agree. How many things can you remember from your university days or your high school days uh, compared to things that you remember just from living life? <laughs> Only tell uh, 10 uh, persons of all information uh, which, I, uh, which I got in uh, university, for example, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll leave this question open to you guys to think about, um, and I want you to think about maybe what do you consider um, what do you consider as being educated? If someone has a degree, are they automatically educated? If someone doesn't have a degree, does this mean they're not educated? Um, what are different forms of education in life? So something to think about. Any last words? All right, well, thank you guys so much for participating. Um, I really appreciated everyone's uh, presence in this class. It was great. I hope you learned some new things, gained a little confidence in your speaking. Uh, if you want to, if you're new to Verbling, you can follow me or any of the other Verbling teachers if you go to verbling.com, or you can check out our Facebook pages and like them, and you'll get updates on future classes and some other fun things. Um, and I, I don't know, that's it. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you guys again. Thank you, teacher. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. And Thank you. Have a good day or night. Bye. See you Bye. Bye.